Hey YouTube, how you doing? So, welcome to my third video. I shot this straight after my second video, so it's going to look very similar in terms of uh, appearance. Um, and I'm going to sound like I've still got a hay fever and <laughs> got a bit of a bunged up nose and a dry throat. Um, so apologies for uh, the appearance and sound and I'm going to endeavour to make this better. Um, on the fourth and fifth video um, I'm just trying to at the moment I'm like just do it just get these things done because I've wanted to make comic haul videos for about two years and I'm like oh I don't know how to make it look right oh I don't know how to make the sound right oh this that, and the other oh, why would I want to watch stuff like that all that time I'm finding these really good comics and going oh, I should be making a haul video out of all of this um, but also um, yeah it's just like well I'm never gonna learn unless I try right you know I could get I could do like a whole bunch of research and this and then I could get all that together and it could be wrong <laughs> so I'm like okay look we're just doing this we're doing this guerrilla style okay it's all about the comics hopefully everybody can bear to watch <laughs> the quality of stuff I'm putting out for the sake of the comics for the sake of the comics endure the quality guys please okay so anyway enough about me ranting about how awful my videos look and sound um let's get on with introducing some comics shall we so um this haul i think this haul consists of the second half um of a shop i did at a shop that's about an hour from my house um, and it's really really good shop it has tons and tons of back issues which so few shops have these days so um, yeah and the prices are normally really really good as well so yeah I love going there um, and yeah I spent I got there at 10 in the morning um, just you know I was the first person in the door so I was there and I was there till two in the afternoon and I still didn't get the whole shop done but I had to sort of put a line under it because I couldn't hold any more comics <laughs> than I had in my hand so yeah once again I failed to get around the whole shop I only got like three quarters of the way around it uh, luckily I never do it in any particular order um, so but yeah once again I, I never walked out of there with that I went through everything feeling it's just too big and there's too much stuff there so yeah anyway we're starting off with the book we finished on last time because um, I think that's what I'm going to do going forward so there's something for you guys to look at while I ramble before I actually get started and uh, right let's uh let's show some comics shall we all right so the first thing I picked up um, from this half was uh, all-star Superman 8 um, this this is for my personal collection so um, I've got one through seven which I've picked up over the years um, so it's really nice to sit down and finish this off so if you can't tell by finish this off you also know I've got number nine number ten number eleven and number twelve and these were all these were all two pounds each apart from this one this was three pounds um, I guess that's probably like retail maybe it's a little cheaper than some places um, but yeah like I say these are from my personal collection um, and so I sat down and reread the uh, the first the first few issues to catch up and remember exactly what the heck was going on and got through to this I mean this is such a good comic book if you if you like Superman um, especially if you like sort of old Superman too, you know, if you're a fan of some of the Golden Age stuff, like the sort of what you might call the silly stories, um, 
this is great. I mean, even if you're not, it's great anyway. It's just a really, really, really good comic book. Um, and it looks great. I really like Frank Quietly's art on it. He does such a good job. Um, but the story is equally as wonderful. Um, it's just really, really good. Um, I just recommend anybody read it, really. Um, I just, yeah, it's it's now one of my favorite comics ever i just really enjoyed the series i thought it was absolutely fantastic so um i managed to pick this up so again this is for my pc um i had i bought all the when i okay so when i was a kid i had all the alien comics but i started collecting it around when volume two came out um maybe issue six of this series was on the on the uh, stands and so i had to get five or one through to five as back issues uh, and and god knows what prints i had um it, i didn't really care at the time i was just sort of pleased to grab them so i could read them um and then i i sold all those years ago and i managed to pick up uh, a run of uh, all six but again, they weren't all first prints. The two and the three weren't first prints. Um, anyway, at this store, they only had two and three. And they were both first prints. So I was really happy. So now I've got a full set of first prints of Aliens Volume 1, um, which is awesome. So, yeah, really happy about that. I'm going to put the second third print copies whatever they were that's in my pc onto ebay um and these ones are yeah replacing them in my in my personal collection um i remember initially reading this when it when i was first collecting and it's great i mean it looks it looks great the artwork's amazing um but i really like the story as well because i was you know aliens when i was a kid was just like one of the films it's just awesome you know there's a, a sort of see you I sort of see people who are into pop culture now who are younger than me and you know they'll buzz about terminator 2 and i'm like yeah but what about aliens <laughs> because you know it's it it's just it, it's not it's not safe like Terminator 2 it's sort of James Cameron off the leash you know doing whatever he wanted and it's just for me especially at that time when everything was you know you were limited on what you could watch you know you had to own a VHS or you had to go to a video rental store and rent it you know and you didn't have a lot now we can just watch anything whenever we want right we just stream it we've got all the media at our fingertips and um, yeah but but back then, this was one of the cornerstones of my childhood, you know, in terms of entertainment. I can't even remember the, you know, I couldn't even estimate the number of times I watched Aliens. I just loved it from the first time I saw it um, until the 150th time I saw it. So when they did a sequel, obviously before Alien 3 came out, <laughs> that part of junk, um, yeah. I was just like that's cool and, and like this story in case you don't know this follows a uh, sort of grown-up Newt um, and Hicks um, going on going on a bug hunt and yeah it's just it's a really good series and yeah I just at the time I was like oh I love this and yeah so there you go that's enough about aliens you've probably already read it and you're like can you just shut up and show the next book please so here we go all right so I grabbed this um, I heard a little bit of buzz about this because uh, this is uh, Wolverine Origins number five, uh, which is the cameo, first cameo of uh, Wolverine's son. Um, and I was like, Ooh, you know, ten pounds, awesome. Um, but I think I might have picked up the wrong one. So there's like a all black and white one that just doesn't have this logo here, um, and I think that might be the valuable. <laughs> <laughs> so I might have made a bit of a boo-boo I might have paid full retail for this I don't know um, 
but still lovely lovely cover quite pleased to have it just for the cover and when I opened it up um, realized that it's uh, Steve Dillon art and I I'm a real big fan of Steve Dillon I think he's great so I kind of bought this as a as a flip thinking oh 10 pounds I can make some money on that um, but maybe not <laughs> we'll see we'll, we'll just see so okay um, also, now this was a shock to me so just going through picked up something number one like that was this was two pounds um, it's pretty reasonable for what it is um, but the real shock was going through the rest of the Swamp Thing and yeah I picked these up so Swamp Thing 20 which is the first Alan Moore um, and this is where he sort of ties up all the loose ends um, from the previous sort of 19 issues before he starts his story um, now, as a kid this was a war book you know um, so to see it in the racks for 250 you know in pretty decent condition was a real surprise and I was like yeah I, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab that um, because the, like 250 is not right someone's someone's done this wrong here you know they've just they've just priced it up as if it was a regular issue not the not the first Alan Moore certainly or any Alan Moore for that matter and anyway behind it was 21 which again was another war book when I was a kid and I think is the other sort of biggie from the front of this run um, which is like the the retelling of the origin through Alan Moore's um, way he wants to do Swamp Thing and again uh, well the, the, that no, the 20 was uh, 250 and this was two pounds so I was like yeah I'm picking it up anyway so they had 22 23 24 which again has some value um, this is a awesome awesome issue because um, I sat down and read all these um, and obviously the first two are good but this one is great this is um, uh, this has got the JLA watching the battle between um, Swamp Thing and Woodrow to see what happens and like literally um, the earth's being destroyed and they can't do anything about it and it's there's a real sense of tension and, and horror uh, and it's brilliant it's just really 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 good so and then behind it was this one and again this was two pounds so this is the first cameo appearance of John Constantine so yeah it was just like wow you know uh, and thankfully well not thankfully unfortunately this forbidden planet 55 pence sticker was on the book and I, I did remove it and <laughs> you can see the tape here I kind of like stuck it back on just to remind me that it was there but it has removed some color with it so it's like ah, oh, that's such a shame because um, this is quite a pricey book you know this is I'd say this is a in its condition it's probably a 20 pound book you know like there's a few ticks and obviously you've got the the color removal from the price tag but it's still the first cameo of John Constantine so you know it's uh, for two pounds thank you very much and uh, they also had 26 27 28 29 and 30 and they were all two pounds an issue apart from the first one and they're all in really nice condition and yeah I you know I sat down and read these um, sort of bought them because I was like um, well a there's a few keys in there but I bought the rest because I was like well this is a classic run and I you know I really like Watchmen and other Alan Moore stuff I've read but I've never I've never 
read this because I I don't like graphic novels. I only like single issues. And the whole time I've been a collector, those first couple, you know, they were just out of my my reach. And I was I was more interested in superheroes to start off with, but when new format came out, I collected Doom Patrol and Sandman and and Hellblazer. But I, these were too expensive for me when I was young, um, at the full wall book price at the time. So yeah, this is the first time I've read these, and they're really good. I mean, yeah, the uh, the early ones are fantastic. Um, I guess we're sort of coming up to. Um, the climax of the battle between uh, Swamp Thing and Arcane by the end of this issue um, so I'm going to have to find the rest <laughs> um, because yeah I mean they just look great but the story's lovely it's yeah it's very difficult to put down really really good okay what have we got next um, I grabbed this because this was two pounds, um, the the UK price variant <laughs> version of Fantastic Four uh, one six four. So this is the first appearance of Frankie Ray, um, who becomes Nova, who becomes the Herald of Galactus. So yeah, I grabbed this because um, it was only two pounds, and I'm pretty sure it's got way more value than that. Um, but I had a good, you know, I had a flick through. Uh, it's actually really really great condition as well um but i had a flick through and it's not really nice george perez art in as well inside and i really love george perez you know i one of the first things i collected was teen titans and again i sold all my teen titans when i was a kid um but over the last few years i managed to collect uh, most of them again so yeah um really pleased but no it's just lovely I, I do really really like George Perez so it's good to uh, good to get like a really nice early FF for a, a good price um, pick this one up this was three pounds so that's the f first appearance of one of Miss Marvel's villains that's probably going to be in the TV show, I think, is the spec on this. So, you know, for £3, it's like an easy £15 book. Um, same thing with this. So this is £3. And again, it's an easy 15 maybe even £25 book. And same story with this as well. This is £3. And this is the first appearance. I think this is the first appearance of Dagger. Um who's um yeah again gonna be one of the villains in the tv show so yeah this one's another easy 20 pound book so for three quid each yeah couldn't leave those behind so um this this grabbed my eye um i just really liked it and so i was like okay i'll pick that up um i think it was two pounds it's not it's no, you know, it's not a nine point eight, nowhere near it. Um, but I kind of just liked it, and yeah, when I got home, and looked up what it was. It turns out it's the first full appearance of Rescue. So like all the and you know Pepper Potts in the Iron Man armor Rescue. So sort of all the buzz about Rescue is all about the cameo appearance, which is the cover with Tony Stark's face on uh, the like down down here with like machines putting the mask on and stuff um and it's like well hang on this is the first this is the first full appearance and there's no one's making any fuss about this at all i mean i you know i guess infinity infinite the infinity films are now done right so rescue's been on so it's like you know the spec's not so hot but still i just really liked the cover it really stood out for me and uh and yeah finding it actually was something when I got home was just like oh, well, well that's pretty cool so yeah while I was in the Iron Man I found this um, and this is the second print of um, Infamous Iron Man uh, number one so yeah you can see this says second printing and you can tell as well because I think the logo is blue and yeah so anyway so uh, this is the first 
uh, AI Tony Stark. So there was a little bit of buzz about this a few weeks ago uh, because um, yeah, they're basically saying that Robert Downey Jr. can return to the MCU as uh, the AI hologram. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But for two pounds, you know, I wasn't going to leave it there. So yeah, I picked that up and I found this as well, which is Iron Man. Uh, 284 and it's a newsstand um, but this is the first time uh, Jim Rhodes wears the war machine armor so although the two issues before this uh, Tony Stark's in the war machine armor this is the first time Jim Rhodes wears it so yeah I thought that was interesting enough to uh, to grab okay else ah there we go so we've got the rest of the Star Wars to do from uh, last episode so yeah um, this was sitting in the with the legacies so this is the uh, action figure um, comic so this came with uh, in a pack of two action figures and uh, it's a really nice shape too um, and that was only only two pounds Legacy number three as well. Oh, these are both Adam Hughes covers as well, um, as you probably noticed. And then this one's got like a strange first appearance in it. There's another minor first appearance in this book, so I grabbed this because this was only a pound. This one was two pounds. Again, it's another minor first appearance. And this was two pounds so I grabbed this it's the first appearance of a daff and they're all in really really good shape I found this one which is another one of the comic pack ones so I think this sells for like about 30 pounds online um, but so yeah this was only two quid and it's it's perfect 9.8 easy peasy um, so yeah really good to find a 30 pound book for two pounds and if this was in the box with the action figures then it would be a 500 pounds book which is very 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 impressive so i will be keeping my eyes out for those <laughs> that's for certain and uh yeah in the in the fep section they had blood ties one for two pounds I mean that's like a ten pound book they had blood ties two for two pounds and like this is like a 30 to 50 pound book so very 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 happy to find that um, and I just grabbed anything else sort of Boba Fett that I thought had a good cover so yeah I got Agent of Doom which I think is a special uh, I did know when I pulled it off the shelf <laughs> uh, I got Enemy of the Empire 1 I mean that cover is so good right you know I had to grab that I, uh, I grabbed this one because um, this has got a little bit of value so this was two pounds as well I think it's probably like a ten pound book um, they had the one with the the Jedi with like the the Twi'lek with the, the blue tails on her head. They had that one too, but they didn't have the Shakti, and they didn't have the Mace Windu. So I was just like, ah, oh, damn. So I was really hoping that Mace Windu one would have been there because I would love that book. Um, but yeah, still good to find a ten pound comic for two pounds. Uh, they had this one for a pound the free comic book day Star Wars book and again the covers just so nice and this book yeah is perfect absolutely perfect which uh, is kind of tough to find in a book that's you know been on the shelves for God knows how many days and what else oh they had this so 
episode one issue one the photo cover so this is <laughs> this is one of the one of the first appearances of Darth Maul I think this is a, like a third cameo appearance so yeah and this was this was was it three pounds I think this was three pounds so I was like yeah I totally grabbed that um, they had this one this is a weird book because um, I can't find much on the value of it but this is the third print of Dawn of the Jedi um, this was two pounds and it's a little bit ticky it's not in the best condition but in really good condition I think this can go for like 70 quid so it was like really really pleased to find that um, but yeah the condition on it is so we'll see um, and sadly this was the only issue of this that run that they had um, and yeah again this was two pounds um, but yeah it's easily a 20 pound book so maybe even more than that I don't know but yeah this was a really 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 good find and the star the star of the Star Wars run for eight pounds with its wizard certificate and everything Boba Fett half gold for eight pounds and it's perfect so I'm guessing that a lot of these books probably came out the same collection um, because they're just they're so good but this one came in its own sort of special bag as well so like a wizard bag so I'm guessing that it just never ever came out of that and it had a board in whereas I think you know sometimes books at this shop probably just sit in boxes in a bag with no board because the condition on them isn't always high but this mm, so good to find this um, I saw someone selling the not gold version for 80 pounds and I think there's a 9.8 online at the moment for sale for 400 so yeah finding this for eight pounds in the condition it's in just blows me away really really does um, and yeah last from this shop um, I popped upstairs looked on the wall and I found this so this is uh, graphic music number one um, it's the first color appearance of madman yeah Michael Red's madman um, I, I was just gobsmacked absolutely you know just flabbergasted that that this was there because and again it's in it's easy 9.6 I think it's in really really good condition um, but, but that's not the point the point is is that I never ever ever thought I would find a graphic music number one in this country I was like if I ever want to find this book in the wild I'm gonna to have to go find look for it while I'm on holiday in America it's the only way I'll find it um, because nobody here will have it and then bang there it is on the wall for six pounds so yeah I was just I don't want to go on about it <laughs> but I'm totally 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 amazed to find that so yeah really really pleased um, okay so I've got two more books to show. Um, this one, um, my my LSC, my local, uh, or my LCS even, my local comic shop, um, just had in their back room, and popped it up on eBay, and uh, and I won it, and yeah. So I paid I paid twenty three pounds for this, um, which I guess is retail, but. Uh, I saw someone show this online uh, 
like a few years ago or maybe a year ago whatever on the on youtube and i was like wow like that is interesting that's an interesting like i've never seen um this uh milo uh, manara's artwork uh before okay so like maybe you hear it big well i wasn't collecting um i don't know but i just remember someone showing this and thinking yeah that's a really really interesting cover i've not seen anything like that you know it's just like the faces and everything i was like that's cool that's eye catching and yeah because my my local shop had it and i know their grading is spot on so when they put something on ebay and they say it's near mint i know it's near mint so i'm always happy to to buy stuff from them and i can just go pick it out with my regular monthly comics so yeah i picked this up and it's the same artist all the way through um so i just had a quick flick because i didn't want to uh to to read this one properly because <laughs> i was just like i've just been really careful with it because i'm like oh it's near me and should be very careful with it so yeah um that's that's kind of that but it's yeah it's really cool i love it i love it i'm gonna have to just try and find some other stuff he's done uh and and check that out because i think it's a really good really interesting cover uh and last of all um i yeah the from my first haul video i sold uh, i sold some of the books from that and uh raised a few quid and i treated myself with the money i made from that to um uh, something that i couldn't really find in the wild so um yeah i, I picked this up so yeah it's a fantastic 472 um it's it came in a pgx slab um so it was a it was a 6.0 in the slab and it was 50 pounds so i was like yeah you know i'll grab that um because although this is quite a tough book to find in the wild it's probably one of the ones that gets snapped up straight away um you know i mean it's just it's lovely and when i had a little flick through it you got lots and lots and lots of these big kirby splash pages of surfer and um yeah it's exactly exactly the type of thing i want you know in my long-term pc just beautiful beautiful example of uh the really good age of comics to collect and um yeah when it arrived I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't interested in you know for a 6.0 I was like there's no point in leaving that in the slab at all you know there's just because it's going in my personal collection I'm not moving it on but also it's a 6.0 so it's not yeah it's not particularly high grade so why would you keep it in the slab so yeah that just got broke out and I've just I've I've enjoyed it and I shall enjoy it again a few more times but um yeah so yeah really really happy that with the funds raised from uh some books i've sold from my first haul i was able to pick this up and uh although i probably paid like full retail for it i'm sure um that's fine don't everything doesn't have to be a bargain <laughs> if you buy it with stuff that you uh that you got as a bargain so yeah the, the good news is is that although yeah although it was full retail I, I didn't really pay anything for this because it was all bought from profit so yeah really really happy and it, again if you think this cover's nice the whole of the inside of this book is just as beautiful it's just a really 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 nice example of uh jack kirby and stanley so yeah very pleased to have it and uh, i might give it another read again later on <laughs> anyway that's my haul thank you very much for watching again um please like please subscribe uh please comment um because then more people will see this and uh yeah i'm not expecting any miracles in like, anytime soon but it'd be really nice if enough people watched it that the video would make a little money because again I would put that towards books 
so yeah as usual thanks for watching all the way through and next time i'm really hoping that it's gonna look there's gonna be no glare and the sound's gonna be better and it won't be as pain and, and that stupid focus thing it keeps doing will stop doing that um yeah and it'll be more of a pleasure to watch so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time